stands for off the record this is your host Caldrick, and you're also listening to warren warren g warren the nerd whatever you want to call me just don't call me sally <laughs> <laughs> i hate that one i hate that one shit man all right so this is our very first episode happy about that you know what i mean off the record um what is off the record well I'm going to tell you guys, Off The Record is a platform for us to share knowledge, passion, educate, and or create conversation about young people that are vulnerable to the re-involvement from prisons, from violence, crime, just, you know, things that a lot of us get involved in as young people and some of the OGs too, you know what I mean? There's a lot of trauma revolved around these things, you know, trauma isn't just getting into a car accident and surviving that trauma is mm-hmm. going through a lived experience. Trauma is going through love, pain, heartache. You know what I mean? Just getting involved in certain things and making your way out. You know what I mean? So, we're going to talk a little bit about ourselves. We're going to let you know who we are. And as we go along in further episodes, you're going to get even more about who we are once we start touching on some subjects and things like that where, you know, we have our experiences you know, it's going to get more interesting as we go along. This first episode is just to let you know who we are and, and where we come from. Uh, OTR stems from Amadeus. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So Amadeus, big up, big up. All the staff members, all my coworkers, that, 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 you know that. what it is. Um, so, yeah, we're here. And the reason why we weren't here before doesn't really matter because what matters is we're here now. And, you know, we're here to make some noise in a positive way. Uh, me and Caldrick, we're not we're not the uh, your uh, natural radio hosts. We're not VJs or DJs or anything like that. So we're gonna stutter, we're gonna swear, we're gonna trip over our words, but we're just gonna roll with it. And I uh, hope you rock with us too. Um, <laughs> we're definitely not ideal. For we're this, definitely but not. We're ideal trying for our this. best because you know what is necessary mm-hmm. is needed, and you know I couldn't think of a better person to be doing this with. So. Uh-huh. We're going to try to do what we can do and try to, uh, you know, share what we can share. And listen, feedback, feedback is goddamn important. I'm yeah, not going right. to say it again. Yeah, we want right. to hear your voices. So that's why we're putting our voices out there. You know what I mean? So you guys can match our energy and relate back and let's get this going. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Amadeus, I did mention that. Warren, mm-hmm. you, you were a, a participant of Amadeus, weren't you? So, so tell, tell, tell us what Amadeus is about. Tell us what, what your experience with Amadeus is and what they do. So Amadeus is a non-profit organization that's really dope. Uh, they go into jails, they, uh, they go into detention centers, mainly uh, women and male, and they provide education to those who seek it. They give you a way to continue your schooling while you're still behind bars, and they do so much more, but that is pretty much the basis of what Amadeus does. Um, When I was incarcerated, we'll get more into into that later on, but when I was incarcerated, there wasn't wasn't such things as as Amadeus, as some of the OGs already know. When you go to jail, back in the day, that was it. You know, you had to deal with the jail politics, you had to deal with the man on the range, you had to deal with your peoples on the road, you had to deal with your lawyer, the judge, the crown, all that kind of shit. But there was no positive outlet. There was no positive resources to better yourself until Amadeus came through. Now, what Amadeus does, they come through and teachers come through in to the actual prison or jail that you're in. And they help facilitate uh, schooling through correspondence. And it's super dope. They, they help you. With your math, they help you with your English. They, you want to get your high school done. You want to do a college course. It's super dope. Not a lot of agencies are doing that. I don't think any agency is actually doing that. So um, I'm actually very excited to be a part of this. Big up to Tina. Big up to everyone in the Amadeus camp. Um, Caldrick, let's start off with you. 
how about how about you tell us a little bit about yourself about myself yeah, yeah i could i could start off well seeing how we're on the amadeus topic i could start with my my connection to amadeus basically you know i was a i was a um an, an employee of amadeus a while back mm-hmm. um i was just coming out of a program called btc um, I'm pretty sure, Breaking the Cycle, I'm pretty sure a lot of people out there know about Breaking the Cycle, East, West Side, you know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, I ended up going to, uh, to a conference, and my, my, uh, my facilitator asked me to, to speak at the conference, because they were looking for someone to speak about lived experiences and stuff like that, and he knew I was dope when it came to stuff like that, so I said, sure, yeah, I'll deal with it, right. you know what I mean? Um, so, went up on stage... Did my thing, whatever, and then as soon as I came off stage, I was approached by a few people, um, and I was approached by you know someone from Amadeus, and they said, "Yo, listen, I like I like you, I like what you got to say, I like you, I, I'm feeling your vibe feeling like this. Vibe. Yeah, it's right, only right. right, it's only right that that I that we have you on board, man. You know what I mean? So yeah, I said, right, all right, let's real, make man. it happen, mm-hmm. right? And then from there, we just started doing magic. You know what I mean? And okay. I started out with uh, with a boys program in, in the Roy, Dope. and I was doing that, and that that was doing really good. The, okay. They they really loved it. The guys really loved it. I mean, like I think I was supposed to have like what twelve participants, right? Um, and you know the first the first day I had twelve participants, and then the second day mm-hmm. there was twenty one dudes lined up at the door. <laughs> twenty one. You just really lined up at the door and said, "Yo, I want to do this," but uh, unfortunately, we couldn't. I couldn't um, have that many guys at that time, so you know there were talks about having two sessions in the works and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. another thing that Amadeus did too was they held a youth retreat. Oh wow! Yeah, it was a youth retreat. Um, we got a, a couple of youth, and we took them out to um, King City side, okay. uh, this YMCA spot um, where you know we went swimming, we did archery stuff, we did team building exercises in the woods and stuff, and. <laughs> You know, I think we stayed there. I think it was like a, a one night, one night stay or okay. two nights. Not, okay. not too sure. I don't remember. It was a while back. Mm-hmm. But we had fun, man. We had fun. Things were, you know, breakfast, dinner, all that stuff was catered. And then, you know, we had our, our times when we had our little group sessions and stuff like that. And okay. we had our conversations. So they don't just, you know, just go into the facilities and, and help out with education and stuff like that, which mm-hmm. is the main focus, which mm-hmm. is dope. But they also extend their reach out to different places within the community and help out different people. You know what I mean? I was fortunate to be one of them. Warren was fortunate to be one of them. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's that's my experience with Amadeus. Yes, where do I start about me? Yeah, who I am. Let me hear about your lived experience, man. Look, lived experience is up there, man. You know what I mean? All like right. do I start from the present? Do I start from the future? Well, Start from wherever. This this is the G check right here, man. Who are you? Where are you from? Tell, tell, past, tell, 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 tell me what's up, tell me what you're about. Uh, all right, I'm gonna start with the present. All right. So currently, right now, I'm 34 years old. I got two kids, two beautiful daughters. They are my world. Mm-hmm. Um, and aside from that, right now, I'm just trying to do the best I can do. You know, I'm human. I still make mistakes to this day. Hold on. Pause. Pause. I know I can see you, but I know the listeners listeners can't see you. Are, are you black? Are you mixed? Are you Chinese? Oh, you? I'm 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 black, man. Strong like, black like, man. Yeah, born <laughs> full Vinci, born in St. Vincent, migrated here. All right. You know what I mean? You know, you hear the little jiggly, jiggly, jang, jiggly, jang. That's my <laughs> chains. <laughs> my chains hanging two from chains. my neck, you know, two Jesus pieces around my neck, you know what it is. So cool I'm out here. Um, I'm just trying to live the best way I can. You know what I mean? Like I've been through some things and I made some fucked up choices. You know, I could admit to that as a man, right? So, with the breath that I have right now, because I feel fortunate that I'm still alive, right? And um, I'm I'm not incarcerated, you know. But a lot of a lot of my friends, a lot of my bros, they're not so lucky. Mm-hmm. So, with the breath that I still breathe, I'm trying to do the best that I can do and make more positive choices and and, and make better steps in life to better myself and to better my community and the people that are around me. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I've been through it, and you could call it from from selling weed to mm-hmm. you know advancing to selling coke, crack, dealing with guns, dealing with you know escort stuff like that. I've dabbled in many of those things mm-hmm. for quite some time, just 
living reckless, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I got caught up, and I, I didn't do real big time. My biggest, uh, my biggest sentence that I got was, like, two years. But, you know, I had a lot of people that were, that believed in me, that were there to help me out, yep. you know? So instead of them shipping me off, I actually ended up staying at Maplehurst and going over to CC side, which was a little bit better. And then while I was over there, I was able to meet some other people that, that, that helped me out. Believe it or not, one of the CEOs in there, mm-hmm. real hard-ass dude, you know what I mean? And a lot of people don't like him, mm-hmm. but... I will say he's one of those dudes that like he recognizes who's real, mm. you know. And for some reason he took to me, and I'm not one to to be cracking the seals and stuff like that. But right. you know, we had a conversation one time, and I, I seen some realness in him. I seen it in his eyes, and he actually helped me and one of my boys out, and he helped us out with TAP, and we got TAP quicker than then we could even fucking snap our fingers, man. And, nice. and he, he did us good with that. Even my boy, he wasn't feeling too well. And I know with TAP at that time, they were only letting inmates out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And right. my boy ended up getting out on a Saturday, right. which was unheard of, right? So he did us good on that part. And I said, you know, from there, I'm just going to keep it moving and paying it forward. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I was able to come out. And um, I just tried to do better i didn't i didn't start doing great you know mm-hmm. it, it, it took steps it took for sure you know it's like a process, right? yeah it was a process but you know it, it was something that i was moving forward towards um and yeah shit like there, there's just so much mm-hmm. and i don't know and i'm all over the place yeah, but you know, it'll tone in that's what we're gonna get into right this is not just a one episode thing this is a couple you guys are tuned in you guys are locked in you know what i'm saying so as as we progress, you will learn more about us. You'll learn more about what Amadeus has to offer. You'll, you'll learn more about what OTR has to offer. And hopefully you guys can share in your input and you guys can let us know what you guys want to hear, what you guys want to discuss. You know what I'm saying? And we we got some topics for you guys too. You oh, know, we'll sure. share that, we got that in a coming. little bit. We got right? that coming. So, and I'm, and we're, we're, we're excited about it. I'm excited about it. Mm-hmm. We know one's excited about it. The whole team's excited about it. We got a lot to talk about. Fuck, yeah, that's that's it. Every now and then I'll jump in with a one, two here and there, you know what I mean? But Warren, right. let us know what you're dealing with. Let us uh, know who you are. All right, all right. Well, as I said before, I'm Warren. Back in the day, they used to call me Warren G, so I still do. But I'm trying to shy away from that whole persona, you know what I'm saying? So we'll just go with Warren for now. But if you want to call me G, I'm not going to stop you. Just don't call me Sally or a goof. Um, as I said before, I have a little, <laughs> you already know what it is, right? Um, as I said before, I have a little lived experience, you know what I'm saying? Um, I grew up in Scarborough, Malvern, you know, the beast of the be- um, belly of the beast kind of thing. Hey, wait, hold on. I'm going to yeah. pause you right there. Yeah, pause it, pause it. I'm not going to lie. I'm a real ass nigga, right? So, like, <laughs> I grew up in Saga. And a lot of people from the West, from the East, they think Saga is like all suburby and stuff like that. And I'm not going to lie. It looks like that. It looks that way. But there's, there's smoke anywhere. You know what I mean? Anywhere you go, there's smoke. Listen, it's just those different. who know, they know what's really going on in Saga. Don't trust me. Right. Saga, Saga. Don't sleep yeah, on Saga mans, man. Saga mans are kicking up noise, too. I see you. Shout out to Saga. Shout out to Saga. <laughs> I see you. Brampton, I see you. Here to yeah, go. I'm in Brampton yeah. now, but I have to pause that because Warren <laughs> mentioned Vernon. Let, let me tell you something. I'm in Saga, and before I heard about Toronto, before I heard about downtown, before I heard about... Tobacco size, the West and stuff like that, I heard about Vern. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, and sir. just the fact that I heard about it, mm. anytime I had an opportunity to go over there, I'm like, ah, I don't even know about that right now. <laughs> Man's have things to do, fam. Can't make that trip right now. You uh, know what I mean? And I didn't even know where it was. Right. I just knew I didn't want to go there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I'm going to throw it back to Warren. I just got to touch on that. that you know? I hear you. I hear you. Well, um. I'm gonna keep it super, super funky with you guys, man. Um, growing up in growing up in Malvern for me, it was it was beautiful, man. Like it's not what people have in their mind, where it's like <laughs> gritty, grimy all day, man. I, I I had a good childhood. I had a really good childhood, but you know, obviously, I grew up in poverty. Obviously, I grew up in a uh, in the gang element, and um, unfortunately, I was uh, attracted to the gang element. And a lot of my friends joined the gang, and I got myself associated with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, 
that gang had problem with another gang. And if you're plugged into the city, you already know what it is. Fuck it, you gotta be plugged into the city. Most most people already know the drama going on with that. Um, it's nothing new. You know what I'm saying? It's not an original story. Every hood has their own politics. Uh, as I said, I got involved in mine. And um, I can't speak on everything that I got my hands dirty in. But uh, because of the conflict that uh, my hood was in, I ended up receiving um, a first degree murder charge. And subsequently, I got convicted. And <laughs> telling you, man, that was one of the fucking worst experiences of my life. First of all, let me back up. I got arrested for first degree murder. I did the two years in the East, went to trial, boom, got acquitted. Zine walked the box on road, feeling nice. But then the the boy didn't pull a snake move and they, they appealed my acquittal and brought, you back brought in. me back in, man. It was fucking go. crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I had to go back in, rub another two years this time in the West. And um, unfortunately, I got convicted that time, and I had to spend the next uh, the next ten years of my life dealing with that shit. So I ended up going to going to the pen and 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 and, and, and going through it. And for those who know what that's about, you know what that's about. So I'm not really going to get into that in this episode, but it was a harrowing experience for sure. You know what I'm saying? But through the grace of God, I was able to. Uh, win my appeal, and you know what I'm saying, and I, I, I landed back in the east, and that's where I hooked up with the the, the beautiful facilitators from Amadeus. Shout out to Amadeus once again. They helped me get my college education going on. That's something I couldn't even do in the pen. I'm surprised I got it. I got it done in the east. For those who know the difference between detention centers and and the federal system, and um, that's how I got hooked up with Amadeus. And then you know, you know how it goes. The crown threw me a deal, and. After spending 10 years looking at balls all day, bro, like, that, to, the deal, the, the, the touch road was looking really, really pretty, so I jumped on it. And, yeah, and, and here I am on road doing my thing. Uh, am I fully reformed? I, I like to think so. Other people probably say no, but, you know, it is what it is. Everyone, you got to do what you got to do, right, especially in, the, in these times, you know what I'm saying? But um, I'm trying to make the best of my situation. I'm trying to give back to my community. I took so, I took too much from my community. You know what I'm saying? I, I impacted a lot of lives in a negative, in a negative light. In, and I, I'm trying to rectify that wrong. You feel what I'm saying? So what I want to do is you might see me in the paper here, or you might see my name on, uh, you know, a speaking event there or whatever the case is, but I'm trying to impose some knowledge of the, you know, of the shit I learned in the East and in, in the pen and on the streets. I'm trying to teach young youngins that there's alternatives to this, you know what I'm saying? It's not all about, it's not all about the gang lifestyle and whatnot. So. It's not about the hype, nah. definitely, man. The hype is, yo, the hype is a, ah, oh, shit, I was about to swear. No, I swear, bro. <laughs> swear, bro. Me. As we said before, OTR, this is off the record. We are not radio hosts. Do not get us confused. We're going to swear. We're going to cuss. We're going to uh, stutter and stumble and have these awkward pauses. And you rock with us, man. Because this is the realest show out. I'll tell you that right now. Man, like, kind of kind of fucked up, to be honest. Yo. You um, know what I mean? Like, even that situation with you where, like, you got acquitted and then had to roll back in. Like, man, like, I, I didn't go through that. But I went through something similar to that mm-hmm. with immigration. Shit. But, like, that was dangerous. That was a four-year battle. And after the four years, they were still trying to put me on that plane. Because, uh-huh. like, I actually got deported. Right. And when I got the letter, I was just like, what is this? Went to the lawyer. The lawyer's like, well, this is not for us to go to court to, like, decide whether you're deported mm-hmm. this is for them to formally tell you that they're gonna put you on a plane <laughs> however <laughs> yeah, i was like what like so um but she said that we could appeal it so we we put in the appeal right away um and then yeah we it was a four-year battle and like i said they were making it like very very difficult but right you know god was on my side my family members friends supporters they were on my side so we were able to beat that mm-hmm. you know what i mean so 
I know what it's like, man. I know when they and 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 I ended up in an immigration situation, um, simply because of a traffic stop. A traffic stop where I didn't even commit any traffic offenses. Dude, right. just, they just wanted to pull me over, and I was on um, probation at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I was on conditions and stuff. And because um, because I was on probation, right? They decided, okay, you know what? I want to slap this this guy with something to go in, right? So they hit me with a obstruct justice. And the reason why they hit me with obstruct justice is because they couldn't tell me why I was being pulled over. So I pulled into a, a plaza, mm-hmm. which was, like, off the main road. So that's private property, right? Right. So I pulled into a plaza, and I was like, what's the reason for pulling me over? Mm-hmm. They couldn't give me another reason they, or a reason at all. They just wanted me to come out of the car. And I wasn't going to come out of the car. Mm-hmm. And I told them straight, I said, listen, no disrespect or nothing like that, but every time you guys tell me to come out of the car... It usually doesn't go well. <laughs> and they're like, no, we just, you know, you can sit in our car. We just want to, you know, make sure you don't have any weapons or any drugs on you. We want to search the vehicle and such and such or whatever. I said, now you want me to sit in your car? I was like, no, see, that just makes the situation worse. Because right, right. anytime I end up in the back of you guys' car, I never go back home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? For a couple of days later or a week or a month or you know what it is. So that was a little struggle, but. I gave in. I said, you know what? Do what you guys got to do. You know, this is my credentials. I'm on my way to see my PO right now. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, I ain't got nothing on me. They're going to search my car. They're going to do whatever. And then they're probably just going to either tow it or tell me I got to hop on the bus. Cool. That's great. You know what I mean? Right. It didn't really go like that. (laughs) They didn't find nothing. Never does. They didn't have no reason to deal with me no types of way. They slapped me up with a fucking obstruct justice. And, yo, for everybody out there that knows what it is, that is the most bullshit goddamn fucking charge out there. Like, I can't stand it. They need Mm -hmm. to get rid of that shit. But whatever. Pulled me up with that. That generated a breach, which meant that they could hold me overnight to go to court to see a judge. So they decided to do that. And then I woke up the next morning getting ready to go to court. They're giving me my paperwork for court. My paperwork says uh, impersonation with intent. I was like, yo, where are you guys going with this? This is not me. This that's not my this not me. I'm on a breach for, for obstruct. They're like, no, uh, we found um identification in your vehicle. I'm like, yeah, the, the there was my cousin's driver's license was in my glove box because he drives my car too. But you guys have my identification. I gave you my identification right off the bat and told you guys that I was on uh conditions and whatnot. Right, and they're like, "Yeah, well, you know, your cousin didn't come in to to claim his identification, so that's why this charge was generated." I was like, "Did you guys contact him?" They're like, "No, we didn't." I'm like, "So how's he supposed to come get it?" I'm like, "This is bullshit, whatever," and just left and went to court. Um, I ended up. My mom tried to bail me. There was some paperwork process that had to be done, yeah. so I ended up doing four days at at Maplehurst. So it went for my first appearance after coming out for the four days. And judge was kind of just like, um, what do you want to do with this? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, you know, like, it is what it is. And he's like, oh, have you um, have you done any time? I said, yeah, I was in for four days. Right. And he's like, okay, well, the Crown is looking for, if you do a guilty plea, the Crown is looking for a $700 fine. And I looked at it, I was like, you know what? I might as well just do that and get it over with because the money I'm going to pay a lawyer is probably going to be twice, three times that. So let me pay the seven bills and just get out of here with that. And then he's like, well, since you did four days in custody, I'm going to just give you four days time serve. You don't even have to pay the seven bills. I said, (laughs) shit, even better. You know what I mean? So I took that. But I didn't know that me taking four days time served for mm. something that I thought was a misdemeanor was me actually pleading guilty to a federal fucking offense, which was um, impersonation with the Wicked people, yeah, I'm telling you. Lo and behold, <laughs> less than 30 days later, immigration is knocking at my door. Right. You know what I mean? And right. long story short, that's how that immigration bit came about. Shit, right? Man. Immigration so, is no fucking joke, brother. Yeah, no, but it's just the way the boy done fucked with me that just put me on immigration's radar. Like, I was already on immigration's radar before right. when I got slapped with the two-year bid, but um, they came in, they did an interview, and they sent me a letter saying, oh, they're giving me a warning, so they're not they're not going to deal with me or nothing like 
right, they're they're done. But this is a warning. Don't right. f up again. Right. And then here comes this friggin' you know what I mean? Like it was just wicked. It yeah, was wicked. That's all they do, fam. That's all they do. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners can relate. You know what I'm saying? The bottom keep pulling black men over. They keep pulling people of color over. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Aboriginals. Spanish, I see you, I see you all. Somalians, I see you all. You know what I'm saying? They keep pulling us over, and it's always the same story. You know what I'm saying? It's always the same story. Yo, listen, this this has me so heated. Like, <laughs> the story happened to my to my boy's cousin, right? Dude was on a... They're, they're just on him. You know, like, he's one of those youths that they're just on him, like, 24-7. See? So, he got released, he got conditions. He's on house arrest, right? So, they pull up to his house. But the thing is... If police pull up to you and they, they ask to speak to you, whatever part of your condition is, you have to oblige, right? Mm-hmm. So um, he was he was sitting out in front of his house, right? So they pulled up right on the curb, mm-hmm. right? And then they asked him to come over, right? Mm-hmm. So he's like, okay, yeah, whatever. I'm going to go see what they want. I'm at home, not doing nothing, whatever. Right. So he went over to speak to them. But the thing is, he stepped on the sidewalk, the sidewalk is no longer his property. That's public property. Slippery slope. Yo, they slapped him with the breach right there and then. Yeah, sure. Tell me that's not effed up. Tell me that's not effed up. Wicked people, them family. Wicked people, them family. But that's what this this shows about OTR. So get our grievances off our chest. Because as, as I said before, these, these are not original stories. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of listeners can relate to them. So what I need you guys to do is go hit, hit up Amadeus's page on Instagram, and, uh, and 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 drop drop a note. Tell us your story. Show us show us what I'm going with you. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is just the first episode. We're gonna get into way way more. We're gonna talk about the BLM movement going on. We're gonna talk about um, what else? We're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about a lot of things. We're gonna talk about uh, relationships, man. Relationships, relationships right? um, the gun violence in our city. Yeah, can we can we can we actually overcome it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're gonna talk about um, yeah, as one said, gun violence. We're gonna talk about uh, trauma, you know, mental health surrounding incarceration, and and we're gonna talk about life during incarceration, after incarceration, uh, COVID. Goddamn COVID! <laughs> like we're gonna be talking about that too, cause that that be messing with a lot of people. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I. I know, you know, a uh, homegirl of mine, she had to she had to bury her mom during COVID. You know what I mean? And and it was kind of messed up because um, uh, her mom was one of the uh, frontline workers that mm-hmm. worked in one of the, the elderly homes. Okay. Um, and uh, the messed up thing was she, 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 she was pregnant at the time, right? So on the day of her mom's funeral, she actually had to be admitted into the hospital due to her pregnancy. So not only did she have to say goodbye to her mom during COVID, which isn't even really a, a real goodbye, she didn't even really get to make it because then because of her condition, she was admitted, right? So, like, you know, that's, that's, that's dangerous. And just thinking about those things can mess with someone, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so we're going to be talking about that and, and how that's affecting our lives and stuff like that. Sure. Um, you know, and, and not, not necessarily all the bad stuff. We got a lot of good stuff to talk about too. We have good times and stuff mm-hmm. like that or whatever. Like I'm not a turn up king, but I'm maybe I'm a turn up <laughs> prince. You know what I mean? Because when the weekend kicks in, yeah. you know, my Avondale <laughs> staff members know, like, yo, Thursday, Friday kick in, like it's hard to get me. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> I'm out there. Right, right. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, you know, we're gonna have a good time. Um, speaking of good times, so, oh, you know what just came to mind? Um, like in the past, like I've passed by Malvern, mm-hmm. you know, I've been in the area of mm-hmm. Malvern, but never really in Vern to like this year. And I'm talking about like, like I've spent so many years not going into that place. <laughs> and like Warren said, you know, it's a beautiful place. A lot of ends, a lot of hoods. Don't get it twisted, man. Like you hear what you hear on the news and you hear what you hear in talks and conversations, but these places are full of beautiful people beautiful that do beautiful things. Sure. Like, and you know, I've never really grew up in any of those communities, but I have friends, you know, uh, family members I've visited, I've been to those places, mm-hmm. and it, it, you know, it's always been a good experience. It's always been fun. Like, I, I just, I feel at home. I feel like me, 
when I'm there, I feel I'm around my people. You know what I mean? Right. So beautiful, beautiful neighborhoods. Don't ever get it twisted. A lot of beautiful people, intelligent people, smart, talented people mm-hmm. out of all these neighborhoods. You know, mm-hmm. it's just unfortunate that the stigma is there. And that's how people on the outside look at it. But beautiful places, because we went down there. Homegirl had a barbecue. You know what I mean? And at first, like I asked my boy, I'm like, "Where are we going in the east?" You know, because you always gotta check yourself. You know where you're going and what ends you're going to. You know what I mean? But he's like, "You know, over here, over there, and turn here and turn there." I'm like, "All right, you know what? We're gonna follow you because we're on the machine them time." And, you know, when I say machine, it's not that thing. It's uh, the, the rev up thing, you know, the uh, bike life. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. You know what I mean? So, we're on the machine. So, he said, yo, we'll just follow you. When we pulled into the spot now, yeah. first thing, I got off my bike. I said, yo, fam, why couldn't you tell me that we're going to Vern, my life? <laughs> like, them type of things is vital information, bro, guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's like, yo, yo, me never did know. You know, I'm like, oh, fam, you can't be doing those. But, yeah, you, you know, we place. got there, went right. went to the barbecue, kicked it with home, with home girl and her friends and whatever, and it was a good time. It was live. Well, you know? Why wasn't I invited to that? That's, that's what I want to know. I didn't know I was going to Vern, fam. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know I was going to Vern until I got there. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? And this nigga didn't even know where he was going. Like, shit. Moral of the story is, like, don't let a nigga that don't know where he's going GPS the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to know what you're doing, man. Yeah, listen, so, yo, we're talking a lot about, you know, my past and and with my past will come, you know, where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? But uh, with the politics going on in the city, I don't want this to, um, I don't want this to, to, to alienate anybody. You feel what I'm saying? Just because I'm from the Vern doesn't mean that I'm not going to rock with you if you're from, from, from the other side or if you're from another hood. You feel what I'm saying? Shout out to all the hoods in the city. You feel what I'm saying? Shout out to, to the mans who are actually making positive changes in those hoods. You know what I'm saying? There's a couple of organizations, right, a couple of agencies that are, that, that are doing big things, and we're going to get into all that. You feel what I'm saying? We're going to talk about you know, being trauma-informed and how to, how to deal with our traumas. You know what I'm saying? So thank you for, for tuning in. Hopefully we, we, we piqued your interest. You're going you're gonna to check out episode two. If not, we're going to come find you. We're going we're gonna to ask you why. Run up on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> on the ones. Like, why aren't you listening? Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're not professionals yet, mm-hmm. but we're just trying to think. You know what I mean? We're Support the thing. You already know what it is. You already know what it is. Um, again, uh, Warren had mentioned Amadeus. Go check them out on Instagram. So for those of you, that is at A-M-A-D-E-U-S-Z-T-O. Amadeus T.O. Go check us out, man. Give us some feedback. Let us know what's up. You know, yeah, you already know. Handles. So, so hit us up on Instagram um, at Amadeus T.O. So at Amadeus A M A D E U S Z T O. Or you can uh, email us at otramadeus.ca. All right, everyone. Very, very sad to say this, but it's time for us to go. Before we do, Warren and I got a treat for y'all, though. Our homegirl Dynasty hooked us up with an ultra-exclusive access to her brand new track. It ain't even out yet. Release date for this track is January 3rd, 2021. So she definitely hooked us up. It's called Where to Drive. Y'all take a listen to this, man. Wagwan, everybody. Wagwan. You are now listening to Off the Record, powered by Amadeus. This is Dynasty, and this is my new song, Where to Drive. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Hit me, uh, hit me. I believe in the hot sauce, that good, good, that top notch, that grandma cooking a wrist off, that recipe got the tips up. I got, got that old school, 90s baby, but so full. Stay hungry like no food, need water, but got juice. Something like Picasso, Picasso. How you say it, ignorant. How we play it, make more money when we don't say it. Like, wah, la, 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 la. You gon' play it like yeah, 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 yeah. I'm amazed at the world. I've been phased by the world. Rather live in a cave, no TV, throwing shade at the world. Not ashamed when the game don't see me, I don't aim at the world. I would lose my mind, being tamed by the world. I've been on a tree step, ting that. I and I and I, different vibe, it make you feel alive. Lately I've been caught up, I've been trying to climb. But it ain't mine, no it ain't mine. 
the feeling come, I'ma beat the gun when it's time to run. I've already done really hard, but you think it's coming from me. You really think it's coming from me. I when I hear the drum, that the da da dum dancing to the sun when they give me some really hands, but you think it's coming from me. You really think it's coming from me. I Wow, definitely feeling that track. Shout out to Dynasty. You guys go check her out on Instagram, man. At Dynasty, D-Y-N-E-S-T-I. And you can also go to her main website. Go to her main website and you can access everything that she's got to offer, which is Dynasty.com. D-Y-N-E-S-T-I.com. Dynasty, big up yourself. Thank you for the ultra exclusive. We love you over here at OTR. Keep doing your thing. Let's go.